Hi there, good morning everyone and welcome to another session or good afternoon now, sorry, should I say. We are in the afternoon and it's lunchtime and thank you for coming on and joining us. People are starting to come in um, slowly and surely, we're getting them in there. So it's good to see everyone on the Sammy Wiz session, our, our new time on a Friday lunchtime. I feel like I've moved to prime time now, so we're getting there. Um, so yeah, we're here. We've got Yaron with us this week, um, who's going to tell you a little bit more about him in a moment, but um, it's very, very good to have him here. So as I've said to you every week, we have, if you have any questions while we're going along, you can email ricky at sammy.co.uk or you can also email, we've got the team behind me working on the emails as well. So any questions during our interview today, send them to Sam at Sammy and the Sammy team will bring them up into us if you can't comment in the lives. You can also comment below the live and leave your questions. Let us know that you're getting ballet. Let, let us know that you're enjoying it. So it is great to be on on here thank you ever so much Yaron for joining us and I'm going to hand over to you now and welcome you and ask you just to introduce yourself to everyone a little bit for me thanks a lot Ricky uh, for for having me here um oh yeah my name is Yaron Engler um I run one-to-one -one and group coaching programs for men and um, it's no secret that a lot of men uh feel quite angry frustrated um disillusioned stuck in some kind of a hamster wheel of life and as men you know we don't have a lot of options where to go to and, and confront these things in a in a productive way that opens instead of shut down so um all the work that i do is based on the crop method which um, i'm sure that we'll talk about later my background is a musician um i have been banging and made it, made a lot of noise this is this is my background literally <laughs> wonderful yeah so um i've been as a musician i've been touring all over the world as a musician um it's been a dream of mine since i was four um and yeah i'll keep it simple that's it you know this is the important background i'm a father also and father of, of two and so yeah and, and yeah all good I'm glad you introduced that bit as the important bit as well. You know, don't forget that's the important bit. Oh, by the way, I am a father as well. That's that's the very important bit. Um, the the children will be most upset if you forgot them as the important bit. I would, I would imagine. But no, that's good, and it's great to have you on here. Um, people are starting to come in now, which is good. We've got Simon's in. He says afternoon. We've got some of the team are in. They're saying good afternoon. So everyone is coming in now, and they will start to trickle in um, as we go through, which is good to see. So. Um, like I say, thank you for joining us. And it's going to be really interesting to hear what you do and hear a little bit more about, about how you do that. So I think we'll we'll go into our questions and we'll start to start to look at this. So tell me a little bit more about your method then. How did you discover and create this and what is it? Good question. So I I discover things after I do them. I, I'm not someone, someone who plans too much. I just go for things with my intuition that I believe are right, like being a drummer. Everybody told me not to do that, but in the end, I made a career out of that. So the crop method was born kind of in the same way. I've been coaching for quite a few years and I've been working with people. But a lot of time people ask you, do you have any method? Like, how do you do what you do? And I was like, I have no idea. So I sat down looking back, like, so what's going on in the work that I do with people and, and what actually leads people from X to Y? And then I discovered that it's actually this, this, this process that I called crop, which the meaning, I like the meaning of it from the idea that, you know, we all have so much noise and busyness and life is, you know, kids and work and troubles, troubles, troubles. How can we crop our lives? to what really matters to us. And, and the, the crop comes from the letter C-R-O-P. The, the C stands for cleansing and clearing. The R is for reconnecting with your inner voice. The O is observation and the P is play. Um, so basically, one of the biggest things that I think is important for us to do is, as, as people is to constantly do this cleansing and clearing from our lives. We have a lot of things around us that are holding us back. Um, and I've been doing this process for many, many years, and, and it can be many things. It can be uh, what we eat. You know, we are all being offered a lot of sugar and salt and things that are yeah. really, bad, really bad for us. So how can I start letting go of things that are not good for me? It can be information. 
you know, a lot of us used to plug into something like this that enriches the body, mind, and spirit. But a lot of us, you know, and including myself, you know, we plug sometimes to information that is quite toxic for us. It is not very helpful for what we want to create in our life. It distracts us. And it can be the environment. What kind of environment do you surround yourself with and how can you make that a bit more cleaner? And it can be also people. We all have people yeah. who hold us back that tells us tell us that what we want isn't right or, or judge us for what is, our intentions are so it's really important to do that cleansing and clearing and um, and once we do that once we detach from everything that we are being told this is who you are this is what you think you know if you go even in, in the streets we're being told what's right and what's wrong for us how do you need to think what's your ideal holiday should look like what your ideal car should look like. You know, once you detach yourself from all that noise, then you come to the R, which you reconnect with your inner voice. You reconnect with who, who, who am I really here? What do I want to create mm -hmm. with my business? What do I want to create with my family? What do I want to create from today? Without all that influence from, from me. And that's a part that is quite um, surprising for most of the time people are quite surprised and it's quite overwhelming sometimes that you discover that the ways that you are functioning in your real life is very remote for what you actually want and that's a bit shaky but it's beautiful moving to the o which is the observation once we i start to function from who i really am and what i want i start to observe my behavior and i'm starting to notice that in certain situations why am i saying this why am i doing this and i can mm. do better and act better according to what i want better decision-making, better judgment of what's going on. And that's it. So once we do the cleansing and clearing, reconnecting with inner voice, knowing who I am, and then starting to observe, then we come to the P, which is what I hope to be most of the time with clients. That's the play. That's where life becomes, instead of something overwhelming and like a burden and the morning comes and, oh my God, it becomes more playful. It becomes more exciting. It becomes more fun. That's the crop. Wonderful, wonderful. I think the 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 P especially sounds that's the 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 great place to be. Definitely, when life becomes a bit more playful and a bit more fun, and and bring that in. I think we do take life too seriously all the time, don't we? So if we can bring a bit of that into it and uh, make ourselves smile a little bit more, um, absolutely brilliant. And uh, Michael's just saying there, don't be a sheep, be an individual. Don't let others try to make you. Um, be what you are not best advice um so yeah absolutely absolutely brilliant well well wonderful thank you ever so much that it's a cycle you know because a lot of times they're yeah. presented like this people think that oh i will do all that and then i will be constantly playing no life is hard life brings challenge yeah. so it's always to come back like if i'm getting into a challenge here what can I clear and cleanse from my life again? What is holding me back? And let go of that so I can reconnect. And it's a cycle. You go constantly go in waves. Every, every cycle, you go deeper. You get to know yeah. yourself better. You're able to connect more with people. You're able to create a business which is more in line with what you really want and so on. So cycle. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, Lorraine is just saying that she's a bit late. She got held up at her conference. Um, just to kind of clarify, uh, Lorraine works with um, a sex and disability charity, so uh, so that's why she was at that conference. But yeah, um, welcome to welcome to everyone. It's good to see people on here. And as we've said, if you've got questions, if you've got com comments, add them in um, to the section. Um, also, let us know what your takeaways are and let us know that you're getting value. Um, and um, if you can't comment on the actual comments, then email Sam at Sammy as well. Um, she will be able to um, pop it, pop any questions in. The Sammy team will pop the questions in. Um, just to share as well, because usually I do this at the beginning, but I know we haven't done this yet, so I'm going to bring this in now. Um, if you want to look into a little bit more what Yaron is doing and find out a little bit more about the crop method and how he can help, then you've got his website there, yaronengler.com. You've also got the LinkedIn information there. So you've got his LinkedIn contacts there and we will share these at the end. You've got the Instagram as well. So we've got all three of those um, and we'll post this up at the end as well. So I think just moving on a little bit more and why do you feel it's important for people to take time to invest in their self or to work on their selves? Because I think that's what life is about. 
you know, are coming to this world not to just follow something that somebody tells us and constantly feel that we are not happy or that things are not good enough or feeling frustrated because things are not going in the right way. I think if things are not going in the right way, and we all have a variety of, of challenges, but um, there is always a choice. You know, I suffered from depression for many, many years. You know, I'm really, mm -hmm. it was really hard from being a teenager and I'm now 10 years um, depression free. And I learned how to step out of it. And I remember the control that it had on my life. I remember that, yeah. I just, you know, I was out for a few days, sometimes weeks. And I knew back then that there is a way out. You know, I could surrender to it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, because I I fought the fight, I'm out of it. Does that mean that life is easy and everything is playful and woohoo? Absolutely not. You know, every day brings the challenges. Every day brings a lot of stuff. But by doing this work, I became more resilient. I became more flexible. I became more knowledgeable and more um, knowing how to 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 you know how to press do i need to go fast do i need to go slow and as i say it's continuous a process it's not like I, I know everything right now i know that there is so much more to grow and it's exciting we're being taught a lot of yeah. things that are not really important to us and we're not being taught the important things you know in school they taught me what happened in in november whatever 1823 and 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 how to calculate angles in in the triangle i've never used this thing in my life Nobody mm. taught me how, how to create intimacy with another person. Nobody taught me how what the importance of creating a saving account, how to put a shelf straight on a wall. These are the mm. important things in life. So I think if we're not being taught this thing, we have to find our ways. And there is this good phrase that you probably know. When the, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. I really yes. believe that because I had amazing teachers in my life and and I had a discussion actually with one of my clients who told me like, I need something like this. And I told him, you just need to create the depth in yourself for that teacher that you want to come. And yeah. I really believe in that. So yeah, life is about learning. Yeah, definitely. And absolutely. I, 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 you, you're quite right. I love that um, statement about when, when the student is ready, the teacher appears and it's the life does have that way of showing the opportunities when, when you need to see them, you know, it is, it is the whole thing of put it out to the universe and, and be looking because it opens your mind more than anything else. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I think um, Simon has just said as well that he loves the idea of crop. Um, but for years, he's been caught in a treadmill of 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. in order to provide house bills, etc. It's taken massive hits in health and relationships in order for him to be able to make to take time away from it all in just just to be able to breathe. Yeah. So. So, yeah, absolutely. And um, Lorraine well, has said. Situation. Yeah. Yeah. And Lorraine has said it's great to know that there is a way to live a life beyond depression. Absolutely. Um, absolutely yeah it's uh, there is so much negativity in the world at the moment isn't there especially with everything that's going on and and it's just um i remember years and years ago someone said about you know why buy the newspaper it just depresses you and ever since that day i i swore i would never buy another newspaper unless they have good vouchers or a competition that i want to enter <laughs> but, you know, but you know, it's, it's trickier than that because we live in a world that everything around us will challenge us to test us constantly so you don't need to buy a newspaper i remember being in london living in london going to the tube I, I never lived the mainstream life. Yeah, I never did the nine to five. But mm. there were mornings that I had to go in the tube, and I already saw that that pressure. That you know, if you have to do it every day, it's, it's quite crazy. But then, what you get in the in the entrance is a free newspaper. You don't even need to pay. Yeah, free newspaper. I think it's called Metro or something. Like that. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And immediately, the first thing in the morning, if you go at six or seven a.m., what you digest will be murder, corruption, la la. And I, I, call, I remember catching myself, like, why am I taking this? Why am yeah. like free choice for me? And I stopped doing this. And then I started to listen to audiobooks instead that inspired me. So yeah. that's when we always have a choice and we can always take a deep breath. Even in the most stressful, crazy moments, we can always take a deep breath, which is something that I work a lot with clients as well. It's like, we need to, to use our bodies. It's not mm. only here. We don't need to sort, yeah. sort it out here. The way out of depression, the way to joy, a lot of it, the body can channel us towards that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So 
what are the common problems or challenges that people coming to you face do you feel um it's a variety of things um usually the, the most typical one will be uh, it's it's men that find themselves they are successful in life they're doing really well according to what success is being described in this matrix that we live in but they're not happy mm. they, they feel that like what the hell am i doing with my life it's it's this discovery that like you know i've been you know somebody mentioned before like walking like a sheep mm. and I, like i don't i don't want to live like that but i don't know how to snap out of it so it can be issues around um wanting to deepen the relationship with with uh, with the intimate partner or feeling that no time with the kids i work like crazy and life no time i have guys that within their business you know i have a client that wants to grow his business from 100k to 1 million great mm -hmm. the financial thing is great but we are working mostly like who do you need to be in order to be that and why aren't you that right now and and i love this kind of work so it can be around that it can be someone who wanted to hire the right people to their office but he always failed with hiring and then we looked at like who are you that attracts the wrong people um yeah. it can be a lot of stress issues you know a lot of men suffer from stress anxiety and depression as well and they don't know where to go that's another big issue why uh -huh. but it's it's quite wide and and oh, sorry one more there are a lot of people who are quite all right actually they feel all right but they want to deepen the relationship with other men they want to connect on a deeper level because men often we know we we are kind of all right we laugh with each other we go to the pub we play football but it stays on the surface and some men yeah. want to go deeper they they believe that they can and the men's groups that i run is exactly for that you spend time in, with other men where all the masks are being peeled and we are real with each other and it's beautiful mm. yeah yeah and i think it is something that you know it's it's good to hear i and i know i i think some of the stuff you do definitely works for whether whether it is male female who whoever the person is that you know they, these are all things that we all need to do as as human beings mm -hmm. um is connect on a deep, deeper level and work on a deeper level on ourselves um but i think it's quite refreshing to hear from someone as well that is specifically working with with men and with the male population because we especially in this country we've had that british stiff upper lip attitude that you should just carry on and keep going and you know we shouldn't talk about our problems and you know we should be able to you know we are the man of the ha that kind of attitude yeah. that i think for so long has whilst it's led to success um for people it's also created um such barriers and it's been part of our downfall and part of our problems as well is that that we haven't been able to do that and you know so i it's lovely to see this kind of work that's being done and where you know we can get to kind of the deeper stuff that's going on um simon says as well um it can be very lonely if you're not into football or pubs i am Absolutely. one of <laughs> I'm 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 totally with that as well. I am yeah. not a football person. My family will tell you. You know, my dad has a conversation with me about football, and I'm lost completely. You know, um, I am more of a rugby person myself, but I do find that is a little bit more of a minority. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know there are a couple of other people watching as well that are more rugby people than uh, than the football people as well. So, so yeah, it's it's really refreshing. So I think. If someone is struggling, what two things could you suggest they do to turn it around, to overcome stress, anxiety, depression? What are two very quick things that you think they can do? So on purpose, I made that a little bit longer than comfortable because I yeah. want to give the demonstration of stopping. Because we live, in, we live in a world that we constantly need to do, constantly need to speak, constantly need to close the gap. So if if I'm in a in a lift with someone, I need to talk immediately about the weather or something that I really don't give a crap about. But I yep. need to talk about it just to not have silence. And that lack of silence is 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 constant. So we can't turn off. So the first thing I would recommend, which worked for me, you know, I've done five day silent retreat, seven day silent retreat, where. I was completely plugged off the world and I saw the impact on myself. So I'm not just saying it. It's like everything that I do is, is things that I've, I've experienced. So. Yeah. That's it. You know, just to be yeah. silent, to be starting to be comfortable with silent. You know, I tell a lot of times, one of the things that trigger the most out of people, I tell them, take 
you know, an hour is a lot because it's really, but take 10 minutes today and see how you react to this, Ricky. If I tell you 10 minutes today, sit down and do nothing. Now, when I mean do nothing, I don't mean read a book, listen to music, uh, listen to a podcast, uh, write something, do nothing. Absolutely. And, there, and without any purpose in it, not trying to yeah. achieve something in the end of this. Everything, we constantly think that every minute of our day needs to be towards productivity of something. It's crazy. So the first thing I would say, stop. Just yeah. dedicate time on your day that you stop, that you don't do anything. You don't try to take in or out. You just are doing nothing. That's the first thing. The other thing um, is, as I mentioned before, I think we should use more our bodies. That's really, and again, um, whatever we can use from the body, um, there is a lot of energy that gets stuck in the body. So um, even, you know, I'm a drummer, so I can let it out through drumming. If you're someone that mm -hmm. can to go for a walk or for a run, great. If you're someone that, um, you know, if you can't even walk or run, Go to a place that is safe. This is something I've done also with clients. I saw clients that are holding so much tension and anger in themselves. I told them, okay, go. where do you have nature without any people? So go there and shout. Just allow yourself to shout. You know, we are holding so much stuff and we have a lot of things that we want to just ah, allow this to happen. And you'll see that with like a few seconds, one minute of letting it out, suddenly like whew, things come to balance. These are immediate uh, remedies. That, in order to continue there, there is a deeper practice that is required, but mm. that's an idea. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And uh, we've got, I think Michael has answered and said what, what rugby, so he's, he's a bit of a rugby fan as well. Jackie said with you on that one, so I think she was focusing on the, 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 the just stopping and the, um, or it might have been the rugby as well. I know she's a bit of a rugby fan as well. So, um, so yeah, and that's brilliant. That's a brilliant couple of quick, uh, quick things that people can use i know that down in bournemouth here we're very very fortunate because we've got the cliff top so it's an ideal place to go and shout as long as there's not too many people around <laughs> they might yeah. they might wonder what's been uh what what's been going on there so um simon was just saying that thankfully um he's been off work ill for just over a year it's given him an insight on different levels um, mainly in craft, art and hobbies, also spiritually. Um, yeah. He's now been reading oracle cards and people to people via Skype, etc. And it's amazing how by listening to your instincts, um, how you can connect with uh, relative strangers. Um, however, he must say he's internally grateful for the government support. So so that's yeah. quite a quite a good comment to hear how he's um how things have changed for him um but he has said he's one that, that suffers from anxiety and doesn't leave the house so you know maybe that's some of the things that that could help um with with that kind of thing with the just stopping and pausing and um you know maybe having that shouting effect i've heard that you know screaming into a pillow is also quite a good um thing to do you know what? Uh, it's funny enough that you say it. I've done a six weeks breathing course recently where part of the course um, was about you put a pillow. And again, if you can go to nature, again, there are always solutions. So you put a pillow on your face and you let it out. Man. And, and I have done a lot of practice in my life. It's amazing how much there still is to, to let go. And after yeah. that, there is much more openness and much more acceptance. It's, it's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'll just put a disclaimer on that one, asking people not to put their face into a pillow for too long, because obviously yeah. could, we, we want them to, to breathe afterwards. So um, Lorraine has said that her disabilities in themselves are not a benefit, but learned ability to create quiet and unplugged time, which has actually been a blessing for her. So that's that's a really positive, different way to look at that, I think, definitely. Um, so yeah, so... What do you enjoy most about working for yourself? Freedom. It's as simple as that. Um, it's hard. It's, it's challenging. It's crazy. But I have my freedom to make the decisions, to be with my children, to um, do nothing if I need some time to do nothing, to go and play my drums if I need to, to choose who I work with. Um, freedom. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And I know you've got a couple of and um, we'll share we will share the links um, after the live into the post. But I know you've got a couple of um, uh, albums that you've released on to iTunes for uh, meditation music and drumming in particular as well, haven't you? Yeah. Well, it's music that, you know, again, 
reflecting back, I, I did all these workshops and I thought like, I'm always using music. Why don't I create some music that I can use? So I created different tracks and they're quite different because I do different work. So the first track is completely for meditation. It's very spacious. There are no drums at all. But then you have the following tracks that are quite with a lot of drumming because sometimes, as I said, it, it, I like to pull into extremes. One of the biggest tips mm. that I got was when I was 19, I heard it from a voice teacher. She said, it's a beautiful quote. In order to know what's enough, we need to know what's too much. And I really, really like that concept. So, so this is why I, I like to take the, to the extreme of the silence and then go to the extreme of the noise. And then if I go to the noise and it's too much, I know at least, okay, that's too much. So I know that I need to stay here. But mm. a lot of times we live life without trying to test it too much. And, and that's where we don't feel that we are going in the right direction. So the music is kind of that. It, it goes in extremes if anybody wants to listen. It's, it's not a mainstream type of music. It's not song. So if you want to check it out, you're very yeah. welcome. Yeah, wonderful. And just on music quickly, because I know we, we obviously didn't touch this in, in the prep, but I know that reading your background, you have a little bit of a musical background. You've kind of traveled a little bit with music, haven't you? a lot yeah yeah it's been it's been amazing to again to fulfill this was a dream of mine i think i mentioned from the year, age of four drums for me were like an impossible dream because back then no youtube we had one channel on tv i saw tv once an hour on the week we had a program and it i got so excited the typical thing started to bang and pants and pots but then it became a career so i, I got later on a scholarship for berkeley college of music and I, I was in the us for three years i finished there after being a horrible student in high, like in high school i was terrible berkeley i finished with summa cum laude which is kind of the highest dis distinction which i find really bizarre and funny that led me later on to go to Spain, where I created a company um, with a lot of dancers and, and musicians, and we were touring around Spain. And then I moved to London, and I've been working with Hoffe Schechter, who is a choreographer. Um, who he's I, I met, we started to work with him, who was unknown, and now he's a very well known around the world. So we were touring like crazy like crazy when i mean we did once in two and a half weeks we did something like i think it was london to singapore singapore took to um seoul seoul to sydney sydney to la la back to london we did, we did basically the circuit in two and a half weeks and you have to go on stages you know like like the sydney opera house go on stage when your body is like at 3 a.m and you're mm. trying to play. it was really crazy but a lot of fun so we've been everywhere um and yeah it, it was great yeah and i think it's quite interesting because a lot of people see music industry is quite interesting because a lot of people see that glamour side of thing the being on the big stages the traveling the world but like you just hit on there they don't see actually the grueling schedule you go through the the your body being at 3 a.m but you've got to be at peak performance because it's 7 p.m there locally and things like that you know it's it's quite a quite an interesting experience i would imagine it is, but again, that's, I'm not complaining. You know, it was amazing. I, and again, I, I wasn't in a kind of the commercial side. I wanted didn't perform with Madonna. You know, I, I was doing artistic, so it was mainly theater. Mm. The glamour wasn't really part of what we were doing. But yes, I have been traveling to I don't know how many countries, and I performed in the biggest theaters, and that was amazing. And and you know, it it was absolute privilege. It does come with a lot of work. But again, that's why I said before. If we are capable to somehow through this process of, I believe in crop, like going more inside, what do I want and slowly divert that, then all these struggles are more digestible. So I mm. can't say that it, it, it was really, if I think about what I've done, you know, moving to like the move to Spain, I moved to Spain because I had that dream. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a visa. I didn't know a word in Spanish. And I knew one guy mm. who left two months after, by the way, but I had this dream. So somehow, it, it, life makes it happen it was really hard but i think it's less hard than doing something that i really hate and i kind of struggle with the meaning of life of it so i prefer the struggle of truth than the struggle yeah. of render and um, let's maybe um and also i decided at some point to stop you know it's something i didn't leave a job that i hated like nine to five job i was a musician touring around the world and i really loved it but at some point it, my heart wasn't there anywhere and anymore so i decided to shift to this thing of coaching which is uh, it's been a long journey to figure that one out yeah. Not <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Um, Simon is actually asking. He said um, he he's also mentioned that he, the albums are downloading at the moment, so he's already been on there to 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 look for those. But he said, can I can he ask? Um, have you if you've ever struggled to pay bills, etc., being self employed? Yes. So you know, the whole period in Spain, for example, was really hard because we were trying to build this company, and we built this company, and we had a lot of people working, and 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 we had a massive studio also. But I, I had months that I was really struggling. You know, I had a lot of people that I had to pay and stuff like this, and it was a struggle. But, but again, we all learn somehow to adopt, to change, to make what we need to make, and um, somehow it works. And it's mm. hard. You know, I'm not saying it's not hard. I remember many days, you know, those days were still also the days of depression. So I, I had these attacks as well. And... And again, learning how to snap out of it and looking at things from a more remote place, not taking everything personally, helped me to cope with these things better. But there were, and I'm sure that there will still be uh, moments that these things of paying the bills or, or the, the life existence is hitting. Mm. Um, very familiar. Yeah, yeah. Simon, Simon saying he the struggle of truth loves that one. So, so brilliant, brilliant. And if anyone's got any other questions or anything they're getting value from, like we said, you know, add it in the comments. Um, it's great to hear. We've got some some comments that have already come through. People are getting some great value from this, which is which is amazing. Um, so, what three top what top three tips would you give to anyone who was starting a business based on your own experience? Oof, my experience is quite wild. I don't know if people want to take my, my advice, to be honest. <laughs> because my advice is more, again, it's more what Simon just said. It's more connected to truth. I believe that it's... Yeah. do Really focus on something that you really enjoy doing. Something that you would really... that Because shit will happen. Yeah. So shit happens when you love what you do and when you believe in, you know, the, the, the cliche of Simon Sinek. It's not cliche, but it's very true. Like, why you're doing this needs to be very, very clear. Mm. Um, and if, if, if you know that and if you have a meaning in what you create and, and you find joy in it, or it doesn't have to be joy, actually, because, you know, some, you know, some people choose to be, um, you know, I've been helping some, some uh, people who deal with refugees and delivering food. This is not necessarily joy. It's very, very hard to face this kind of thing. But, but some people have it in them to really do that full on. So that's the thing. So it's again, it's once we do the cleansing and clearing, reconnecting, who are you and what do you want? I, mm. you know, we underestimate things like cleaning. I have no disrespect, absolutely nothing, you know, to any job in life because I know I'm trying to be a waiter once in the restaurant and I was horrible. My, I have full respect for people who are capable to bring a tray with everything without spilling anything because I'm a disaster. So it's about finding who you are and what you want. That's the first one. Sorry, I'm going a little bit on a tangent here. That's all right. <laughs> for me, that's the most important one. Then um, ask for help. That's another thing. We constantly, we're trying to figure it out. We think that it's, it's you know, nobody will understand. Ask for help. Go out there, try things, check, test, talk, ask, and, 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 get get feedback get feedback but stay true to yourself get feedback filter the right the truth and stay with yourself and what's the third one i would say surround yourself with people who support you but they are but they are also um, brutally honest because one thing supports you, if you are going in the right, wrong direction and people support you in a way like no it's great no it's great even though they feel that it's not that's not helpful. Surround yourself with people who will be brutally honest, will tell you like, this is a great idea when it's a great idea, or I just don't get it. You need to work on that because if I don't get it, I don't think others will get it. So that honest feedback is really useful. So I didn't think about this answer before, but what did I say? Because stay true to yourself, find what's really is important for you. Ask for advice like crazy. That's something that I found really, really useful. Ask for, ask for support, ask for what you need from people. They, they are willing to give. And the third one is surround yourself with positive but brutally honest people. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, and I think that third point, that's what we we talk about a lot with people when they're starting up um, for themselves is, you know, you can you you find there are people out there that are rooting for you either way or just want to protect you because they're worried about you. So they'll tell you something's great because they want to see you succeed or yeah. they'll tell you, no, don't do it because they're worried that you might fail and might hurt yourself. But actually finding the people who will be have that brutal honesty with you that will kind of say to you actually no that is a good idea. and it comes from expert knowledge as well that's always the other thing I think is getting the right expert knowledge with it definitely um but also we've um um I uh, there's a there's this quote that I love that I heard once which is opinions are like belly buttons everyone has one but they're useless <laughs> And I love that one because it is, you know, that that's a great way of looking at things. Is, I love you know, it. Find the, you're right, ask for the support and find the advice, but get that that brutal expert honesty that is going to say to you, yes, that's a great idea or actually I would maybe walk away from that definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you. Um, there's a couple of people that, that have come in with different things. Um, Lorraine is saying it does happen. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Simon has said that um, he finds a great deal of mindfulness and calm when he's making um, his pieces. So when he's working on the bits that he does. Lorraine also said accepting positive feedback and believing it. Um, she's gradually getting yeah. the hang, hang of this. Thanks, Team Sammy. So, yeah, we've been doing Very a bit good. of work. That's a brilliant one because, you know, a lot of times we shy from getting honest feedback. We're like, no, it wasn't me. Yes, own what you've created. You know, I've, I had a lot of difficulties. I still have sometimes difficulties, but just let's own. It's also to get the, mm. to be open to any feedback, to be able yeah. to give also any feedback. That it's not even negative or positive. It's constructive or, or affir affirmative, if we want to yeah. say. It's a great point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brilliant. And, and I think... Um, Knowing what you know now from your journey, if you were to travel back to the younger you starting your career, what would you say? What kind of advice would you give to your younger self? I don't really believe in looking back and, and you know, because I really believe that we all have our journey and all the shit that we went through is great. And yeah. it's, it's the teachers that it's like there is a teacher in the in any any experience that we had in all the depression that i had all these kind of things it's part of who, who i am right now so instead of kind of like ah, looking back what could i've done different it's like thank you yeah and now i can make my choices thank you now what choice do i take yeah. so i think the only advice i said i thought is just have fun you know yeah. have fun yeah leave it there <laughs> have fun leave it there i, li I like that definitely definitely that that's amazing um and actually what you said about you know the the, the things that have happened have made us it's so true and um i love a quote um i'm a bit of a tony robbins fan and some people are not but one of the things he says is you know when things happen to you or someone does something to you or someone is a result of what's happened yes you can blame them but you also have to thank them because it's because of that action or because of what's happened is that actually you've turned out to be the person you have, you know, so, and, and I like that, you know, is yeah, definitely, you know, blame things for things that have happened, but also be thankful because actually as a result of that, you are who you are today, um, mm -hmm. which can be an amazing thing. So, so yeah, uh, that has been an absolute amazing chat. Yaron, thank you ever so much. I just want to share your details again as well. Um, so we've got your website there, um, yaronangler.com, um, Angler, sorry. Um, and we've got your LinkedIn um, details there so people can connect with you on LinkedIn. And we've also got your Instagram. And if people need those details sent through, I can pop those details as well um, over to you. So you can always drop us an email um, at the Sam, Sammy Rickett Sammy. Um, website so that we can get you in there um, and if you've got any more comments if people want to share any value please share them as we as we wind up today's session but that has been an amazing session there has been some brilliant um, bits that I think people are going to take away from and get value from definitely um, and they're already coming in Simon saying thanks guys really positive um, 
thank you so much and the others will start to dribble in um yeah lorraine saying great session thanks so yes thank you so much for giving up your most valuable commodity which is time as i always say so thank you ever so much for that and thank you for joining us um any final thoughts that you'd like to add yeah i think to sum up you know we spoke about a lot of quotes so i have my quotes that i created for myself and i'm going to give it to people connected again to this thing that we spend a lot of times in, in our head and we're trying to sort life from our head so my quote to you if you want take it or leave it lead with your heart and let the head follow instead of leading with the head living life of regret in your heart leave it there excellent wonderful i love that one Thank you so much. It's been a it's been a pleasure to um, be another session. We're in our new time, Friday lunchtime, which is great. Um, so feel free to join us next week with another um, person. But for now, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Yaron, I'm sure. Um, and thank you ever so much. Good to see everyone. See you next week. Take care.